Hello everybody, I'm Brent Pierce, and today I'll be going over unusual flight attitudes, what commonly gets you into them, and then how to recover from them. Uh, so this, so far in our uh, flight training, we are taught to um, uh, basically fly uh, under the hood or um, in, 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 uh, in the clouds and, and such. And if, I, if there's anything you take from this video, I want you to remember that to keep, keep your scan moving, to rely on your instruments, and do not fixate on one. Um, you'll hear me say that multiple times through this presentation. Um, so number one, ignore your body sensations. Um, when you, as soon as you lose sight of the ground or anything like that, you're flying in the clouds, you're under the hood, um, you start getting sensations because you don't have reference to outside. And it has to do with your inner ear. And, and your senses uh, uh, above and, and uh, you know, inside your canals and everything. So um, moving forward, uh, we need to know your, 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 your two uh, primary um, attitudes for keeping your aircraft straight and level, and that is bank and pitch. Uh, your gyro, gyro instruments show bank. So you have your turn coordinator, your directional gyro, and your attitude indicator. Um, your primary is going to be your directional gyro because that's going to even tell you if you're a degree off or you're banking even as slightly as a degree. Um, so you want to keep that scan moving and you want to uh, reference that one and then you know use the other two to verify that um, you're, you're staying true or you're staying coordinated in the turn or anything in, in that nature. Um, then you have your pedostatic instruments which show your pitch. Uh, you have your, your airspeed, your vertical speed, indicator and your altimeter. Um, and you want to keep that scan moving like I said. So right here you'll have a, a, a common six pack and you have one, two, three, four, five, six and two indicators in the middle. So how I like to do my scan is I like to go attitude indicator or airspeed down, down, down and then keep going back to the attitude indicator as such. That's, that's how I do my scan and I look at my gauges after a while. You know, keep the scan moving, go back to the attitude indicator each time, keep that scan moving. That keeps me uh, staying true to uh, make sure I'm keeping that scan moving in a systematic manner. Uh, moving on, we have spatial disorientation causes. Um, so each one of these have names associated to them and, and, and they're, they're common uh, illusions and, and f sensations that you get in the air. Um, starting out, you have leans. Um, that is like a, a, sl a slow bank and all the fluid in your ear catches up and then stops level right right where it starts to bend. And it's, it's telling you, you are in this bank, whether it's right or left. And then all of a sudden, what you decide to do is you decide to abruptly go back and centripetal force sends the fluid in motion into the opposite direction, giving you a false sensation that you're banking in the opposite direction. And then you have the Coriolis illusion which is almost the same as the leans, but here's how it's different. Again, you're in a prolonged turn, fluid is level and everything, and all of a sudden you do any abrupt head movement. Um, shouldn't be doing this at any time anyways, because it can, it can stir up your, uh, uh, um, the fluid in your ears and give you false, false sensations. And what that can do is it can send you for a false, false loop. Um, so, Anytime you do that, it, it'll it'll slosh it around, and you can feel like you're tumbling backwards, or you're spinning, uh, or you're increasing your bank. Graveyard, graveyard spiral. Again, you're in, in in a bank, you're established, you've been there for a while, and all of a sudden, but you do feel like you are losing lip because you lose your horizontal comp component, and you know, ultimately, what you want to do is you're going to feel like you need to pull back, but. If you're in a, in, a, in a bank, what that can do is tighten the turn. So you need to be aware of that be, because <laughs> tighten the turn, I mean, that can lead to stalling, spinning, and, and, and aggravate uh, uh, the maneuver that, you, that, that you're actually trying to do. Um, next is the somogratic illusion, and that one's pretty cut and dry. Anytime you accelerate, you feel like you're a nose high. Anytime you decelerate, you feel like you're a nose low. And that has to do with the fluid in your ears, in the canal, and, and, and anytime you do that, it changes direction, telling you that you know, you're falsely going down or you're falsely going up. Inversion illusion. Any abrupt change to straighten level, to, to a climb to straighten level flight. So automatically your senses are already 
tuned in, you, you're, you're doing good, you're in, a, you're in a climb, and you switch that, and centrifugal force sends that fluid and everything in motion, giving you false, false sensation that you're tumbling backwards when you're not. Moving down to how to correct uh, a, a, uh, any unusual attitude that you may find yourself in, uh, whether it's due to, to these or any other causes. Um, if you're in a nose low, you want to reduce power, level your wings, and then nose to the horizon. And the reason why it's like that is because if you're in, in a nose low, and you go ahead, you go ahead and you you, you want to you know pull pull back to to uh, um, get back to straight level. If you're in any sort of bank, that'll just tighten the turn. That's why it's like that. And then nose high, you want to add power and then bring that nose to the horizon and then level your wings. So it's just flipped. Power on stall, simulate and take off. So you're, you're, you're going up too much of an angle of attack and all of a sudden you notice that stall, you wanna bring the nose to the horizon. So if you're an IFR, look at your uh, attitude indicator. Um, and then, then you wanna to go to level flight and then uh, verify the power is full and then level off and regain. Power off stall, simulating the landing. So you're gonna go from you know low, nose low to nose to the horizon, or if it's up, you want to still go nose to the horizon, full power, and then first notch a flaps out, carb heat off. Then you want to accelerate to VY and then dump out your next flaps and then trim off. And if you're in a spin, let's say the spin is to the left, you're going. Neutralize your ailerons so it doesn't aggravate or increase the spin, and then rudder full opposite, which is going to slow that down. It's going to put back. It's going to put pressure on the tail, so you're going to hit kick it to the right, and then as soon as that spin starts slowing down or stops, elevator briskly forward to regain yourself and question mark flow. So this is my presentation on unusual flight attitudes, um, what causes you to get into them, and then their associated recoveries. I hope you enjoyed. Again, I'm Brent Pierce, and thank you for watching.